to kick things off with my Ironman training, I'm going to do a ridiculous amount of tests. And we're going to start with the CSS or critical swim speed test. All right, so the first part of the CSS test, a 400 meter trial. Time starts now. So what is a CSS or critical swim speed test? Simply put, you first swim 400 meters as an all-out effort. Then you take a quick breath and then you swim an additional 200 meters as fast as you can. From these results you can calculate your critical swim speed which is basically the pace you can swim with for 1,500 meters or more. Now let me tell you, for me this was a horrific test. I'm not a good swimmer so the first 400 meters were pure torture. I started off way too strong and after like three pool lengths I was gasping for air like my life depended on it. Well, actually, my life was depending on, on me breathing, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but 6.45 for the 400 meter trial. I am obliterated. Five minute break and then 200 meter trial. What's a good time for 400 meter? Time starts now. The 200 meter trial wasn't that bad, actually. It was a shorter distance, so I was able to compensate my lack of technique with decent fitness. So I just paddled like crazy and hoped for the best. <laughs> Three minutes and six seconds. <sighs> Next. We're gonna do some tests for cycling and running. Now I'm gonna do a functional threshold test for the bike. And I've done a few of these before, and they hurt like hell. So I'm not, I'm not looking forward to this, but do it anyway. A functional threshold test tells you the maximum output you can sustain for about an hour in race conditions. The field test for the bike is simple. You cycle as hard as you can for 20 minutes, and it's pretty awful. You just hate this. So it's not optimal to do the running test on a treadmill, but I really have no option. So let's do this. Finally, I did a functional threshold test for running. It was even worse. A 30 minute long all out effort. After 10 minutes, you want to stop. After 20 minutes, your soul starts detaching from your body. But if you do make it to 30 minutes, at least you can be happy about the fact that you just burned like 16,000 calories. And also your stomach is probably so upset that you have to rush to the toilet with the last shred of energy you had. At least uh, I had to do that. Without a doubt, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. At the 20 minute mark, I was already certain that I wouldn't make it, but somehow I did make it. And my max heart rate was something like 198. I mean, look at this. The workout was so intense that even some of the micro vessels in my eyes just exploded. That was intense. <laughs> So now that I've finished all the fitness tests, I can figure out my training zones. The only thing I need to do is to input my results in these calculators that come with the training plan. So for bike, my average heart rate was 171. Calculate. For running, my average pace was 4 minutes 18 seconds. Calculate. And my heart rate was 182, which is pretty high. Calculate. And then for swimming, 200 meters in 3 minutes 6 seconds. 400 meters in 6 minutes 45 seconds. Calculate my swim speed training zones and voila now we'll have my training zones i can use these training zones to evaluate and adjust the intensity of my workout and according to this book i've been reading around 80 percent of my workouts should be in zone one or zone two in the in the low intensity zones and that's because the lower intensity zones tend to increase my endurance and i need a lot of endurance for the iron man cool Then I took some progress pics and body measurements. I measured things like my chest and, and my hips and, and my arms, forearms, uh, quads, calves. Uh, I even measured my neck for God knows what reason. And these simple body measurements weren't enough for me. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, I also want some accurate measurements on my body composition. So I'm going to go do a DEXA scan, which is apparently the most accurate way to measure your body composition. Eight. 
Hi, Mark. Hey. Nice to meet you. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Now, what is a DEXA scan, Mark, and, and what does it measure? Yeah, so this is a, a very low dose x-ray machine. It's a densitometer, so we're looking at total body fat, muscle mass, as well as bone mineral density, all regions of the body. This is the gold standard in terms of measuring body fat. All right, well, let's do it then. We are gonna come together. So head back, arms are just gonna be a little tighter against your side for me. Perfect, just hold that position. Right, so what was my what was my uh, fat percentage? Body fat percentage on you, Johnny, was 15.7. What do you think, what would be a good uh, race weight fat percentage for me? So because we know what your fat-free mass is, I think a good target body fat percentage for you would be about 10%. So your target race weight would be about 180 pounds, which in kilos is, for the Finland fans, uh, 80, about 82 kilos. Uh, roughly so right. yeah, I think that would be a good good goal for you. All right. Great. Thank you And uh, nice I will be here you. again probably so awesome. Sounds good. Look, good luck with everything Finally, I wanted to test my mobility So I paid a visit to marathon physical therapy to get an assessment and as expected the results of the assessment were dreadful Hi, hey John Isaac So, um, what have you prepared for me today? Uh, so we're gonna start with a functional movement screen and then a video gate analysis. All right, that sounds fun. I will fail at this, but well, let, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so yeah, here we have the functional movement screen. We're gonna put you in a bunch of really awkward positions and see how you uh, do with them. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm a bit nervous already. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start with an overhead squat. Sure. Fight a bit, right? And then we're gonna drop into that lunge. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> We're now moving to the assessment of my shoulders, and this is the pain point. I think this is that. This is the... Okay. So that's going to be your worst score yet. Okay. Maybe you knew that going in. Is that on the red zone? <laughs> I don't like to call it that, but yeah. Yeah, that's a better one. <laughs> so go ahead down. That's a clear and apparent one. When the instructor starts <laughs> laughing about your results, you know it's it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. This was impossible. What? I No way. I can do this. Oh my god, that was terrible. I, I never want to do that again. I mean, this, this explains why I'm so bad at swimming. Also, now that we have my results, there's an app that actually gives my overall score for the FMS. You can get a, generate a uh, corrective exercises program, right? Yep. There it is. Just like that. Wow. So here we're going to do a video gate analysis, see if there are any biomechanical issues that we can clear up to optimize your performance. Didn't look at the camera at all. <laughs> How long is it wrong? I'm going to be like, no, no, no. Yeah, nice and short. Key takeaways from the running gait analysis. I should increase my cadence by five to 10%. Now my cadence is around 160 steps per minute, but my running technique would probably be better around 170 steps per minute. I land around midfoot with my knee bent a bit, which is good. If I land heel first with a straight leg, that could lead to injuries like shin splints and knee pain. However, I do bounce a bit too much, which would get fixed with higher cadence. Lastly, it's 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 no surprise that my upper body is is quite tight when I run. So I should use my arms more when I run. All right, Isaac. What what were the results? Well, in a nutshell, we need to move your feet faster, uh, jump a little less, and probably move those arms a little more. So. <laughs> <laughs> the quick and easy ones. Oh, yeah. All right, Isaac, thank you. Have a good one. You too. So, thank you for the guys at me. Uh... It's a bit too loud here. 
that's better. So uh, what I was supposed to say is thank you for all the guys at Marathon Physical Therapy. They were amazingly supportive and they gave me a ton of tips I can use to improve my training and performance. For instance, I'll use the results from the functional movement screen to create a mobility training program alongside my Ironman training program. And that will probably help me uh, prevent injuries and improve my performance. So that's about it for this video. I will see you in the next side note here um, I also noticed that the percentage of people who have uh, ringed the bell is uh, alarmingly low um, so um, if you if you like this content uh, consider uh, subscribing and uh, ringing the bell <sighs> all right uh, thanks back to the video fun